KHTS. Hey, welcome to the show, the Total Financial Hour. I'm Eric Hallaby. This is uh, Logan Hallaby with me today, talking about your family's finances. Listen, if you, uh, you know, you kind of know my philosophy. If you listen to us in any time in the last 14 plus years, uh, we talk about various things, specifically why it matters for you to uh, actually have something to do when you retire. You know, listen, uh, 22 years ago, coming up on 22 years ago, when I started in the financial world, our goal was to get you. Uh, to retirement with as much money as possible to get you to a place where you could retire and have a financial life and things were good, right? But today it's different. Today, today retirement is, is not the same as it was in your parents, maybe certainly your grandparents' day, which is wake up with a million, two million, ten million dollars, and now you're done working. It's different because purpose is very important. You're living longer. You're healthier. You know, many people are not eating bacon and eggs for breakfast seven days a week and a big T-bone steak with potatoes for dinner, right? We're a little bit more careful. Uh, words like kale and super beets, right? Those things come into your vocabulary. Ask somebody who who never thought that that would be part of their vocabulary uh, that suddenly that becomes a meal. Uh, and I don't know, Logan, your generation, you're in your early 20s. Tell me what it's like when you guys talk about retirement, because I want to get into some statistics here that I think are going to surprise some of you folks. Well, a big part of retirement that we're facing with is many people who are in getting closer to retirement than we are didn't necessarily plan for living for it until they're at 80, 90, even 100. That's the fastest growing segment of the population right now is people who are been retired already for decades. And yeah, sometimes longer than they've worked, you know? Yeah, they didn't plan for that. That wasn't... If you someone who was 50, 30, 40, 50 years ago, they never really expected to, to live that long. And think of it this way. You know, for a lot of us, retirement used to be getting to a place and waiting to die. You know, sitting on the porch and we're done. And just watching, a, you know, the, the that hourglass, right, the sand drip. <laughs> it's not even about that. Today, it's about the process of becoming and being something that still is important. You can't have uh, folks get to a retirement scenario and forget that you need to make money, forget that you have to have a purpose, forget that you need to be uh, important in, in somebody's life. Make sure you're not that person who is uh, bothersome, right? H how many times, Logan, have we seen it where retirees will come into our office and you're just, I guess boredom is probably the best. Uh, it doesn't matter how much money you have. If you don't have any friends that can travel or be with you or, or do the hobbies or play the tennis or, or, or be available on Thursday night because they got to wake up early in the morning for Friday commute, right? It's different. And a lot of people may not be in good enough health to do the things that they'd like to do. And when you're stuck at home, really you're going to have a downward spiral where you are able to do things financially, but maybe not physically, or you're caring for a spouse who is, or even a, a parent. There, How many retirees do we know that are caring for their parents while they're also retired? Yeah, that's right. That's a very good point because now there's different costs. Now you have to move where maybe before you thought, oh, I didn't have to move. There's plenty of room for me and my wife and or me and my husband and the grandkids when they pop over. But now you're caring for an elderly mother or a grandmother or or mother-in-law. And suddenly the housing needs that you had at one point shift into thinking we need another bathroom, a uh, bedroom with an ensuite, right? I love that term. It sounds so European. You know, attached bathroom to a bedroom or at least in a dedicated bathroom so that there's some privacy for your grand for your parent. Because a lot of times we didn't expect that to happen. And uh, I don't know what the numbers are, four out of five, I guess, something like that, of the times when I hear about uh, parents living with kids, right, living with adult children that are retired or close to retirement, four out of five times it's a mom, it's the lady. And that's a different conversation when suddenly she has needs. I mean, we forget, you guys, that our parents are people, right? How many times do you look at your mom and dad and you forget you know, they have fears. They have hopes. I remember the first time I heard my mom say something that didn't um, 
uh, make me think she was a superwoman because my whole life I thought she was the superwoman. I thought she was, you know, could do anything, had no fear. There was a problem at school, <clears throat> a teacher, or, or she went there, man. She was there standing in the front, little five foot three, 120 pounds, whatever she was, and was fighting off the world. And then I remember she, she got a little older, nothing too dramatic, but she had some, I don't know, she lacked confidence or she was afraid. And I thought, what? First time. So most of you don't have that same uh, misconception or, or illusion that your mom or dad are, are not people. But for, don't forget that they have a need to have value because you might be that person someday. Because statistically, supposedly, you're going to live longer than they are. And we have to realize in retirement, there are certain things that will change in your life. And Logan, one of the things you talked about was how you, when, when you're retired, sometimes you're not as healthy. You start getting sick more. And if you, your dream in retirement, which is 10 years from now, is to travel the world or hike Machu Picchu or something crazy and extreme like that, are, is your body going to be up to that necessarily? You know, you, there's, there are, uh, all, I, I like to travel. For most of you know, that's where we spend our extra time and money. Uh, is traveling. It's my thing. We grew up traveling. That's what we do. But to find out of the experiences, yes, hiking Machu Picchu, right? But there's a hike that you can do. I don't know how many miles it is. I think it's 30 miles along the Great Wall of China where you can hike during the day and then at night you go down. It's, it's preset down into the villages and you stay with local Chinese families and you eat their food. You You, you partake in their whatever social activities are, the next morning you're up and you're hiking again. What an amazing, life-changing experience. You can't do that when you're 96 years old. So there's some concepts that I want you to get used to, and that is retirement is about money. We talk about that all the time. We're the total financial hour. That's what we do. If you have any questions, you can always call us about it, 888-99-RETIRE. You can catch us in the office. It's 888-99-RETIRE. Important you know that because the phone number works even when we're on and off the air because it goes directly to the office after the hours. But you could be in a place where you're considering, how do I keep my mind active? Maybe you're not that physical when you're working. Maybe you are. But if you're not, you need to keep your mind active. And one of those is reading books. One of those is going back to school, picking up the hobby, the things that you loved to do, whether it was photography, whether it was writing, art. Things that require you to be there. And, and you know, Logan, here in, in Santa Clarita, we have a lot of classes that are built around uh, retiree schedules, if you will. We do. Morning classes, afternoon, stuff the simple like art. We've got people, I've known a lot of older people who have been taking classes at Seat College of the Canyons. They've always wanted to try welding or art or whatever. And they, and More they hands have the time. on, huh? Exactly. Something yeah. to, to do that's a new hobby. And what we've noticed really is that there's multiple phases for retirement. So it's not all going to be the same thing from age 66 to 96. Yeah, you're right. Actually, we have three main phases of retirement. The, and they each last about 10 years. Uh, Tom Hania is an amazing author, somebody we've had on the show before. Uh, and he breaks it down by saying it's called the go-go years. Right? It's a time when you are going. You retire and you hit the ground running. You're, you buy the RV or you finally get the boat out of storage and you're taking that out and you're doing something every day, every week. Uh, you're, you're out and about. You're gone. By that time, your kids are in their 20s. Maybe the, some of them are married. Maybe you have one or two grandchildren. But the second 10 years is a lot closer to home. Usually it's about a 50-mile radius. And that's called the, the stay-go, right? That means you're staying close to, to home. If you're going somewhere, it's close. Grandchildren are coming over. You're going to spend your money taking everybody on a Disney cruise or a princess cruise or you're going to do the uh, Hawaii trip, right? That's fun. The last 10 years is the no-go years. You're probably not going to leave your house except for hair appointments, doctor's appointments, or pharmacy pickup, right? It's incredible how those things in your life if they are the only thing that you have to look forward to, become fairly important, right? Remember you're working. A doctor's appointment is just one of the 20 things you got to do this week. But when you are retired, and that is the main thing that you look for, 
right? Uh, you just go, okay, wait, Tuesday the 27th at 11 a.m. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm doing tomorrow. But folks, if that is the only thing that you have to look forward to, then there, your perp imagine for a minute your focus and your purpose in life is from doctor's appointment to doctor's appointment. What's the illness? What's your focus in life? It's going to be on your health and on illness and not feeling well. Wouldn't it be great to have that as, oh yeah, by the way, I have to go to, to, to get a checkup. But meanwhile, my focus is doing my pottery or my focus is volunteering at the elementary school and reading to children or working, out at the, uh, working with the homeless shelter or working out at the club, at the spa, right? Those things matter. And, and so we have conversations when you're healthier, when you retire. Tell me about that, Logan, because when it's healthier not to retire. And a lot of jobs and businesses when you're working, you tend to have health benefits you may not always know about. If you're just walking around the office or the store for a couple hours a day, you might be racking up three, four, five miles a day. It doesn't feel like it, but it does help you, and it's good for your body to move. When you're sedentary, if you retire, you're watching TV, or you're just not doing much anymore, suddenly some of those health benefits you didn't even realize you were getting, they start to go away, and you can have some problematic effects build up. You know, a gentleman uh, was in the office yesterday, and his son, somebody that I've known, in fact, you've known him since, I think, elementary school. We all, uh, maybe preschool together, and I remember him, and here's what was funny about it. They said, oh, he's a mail carrier now, and he walks 12 miles a day. because He's on a walking route. I thought, oh my gosh, 12 miles a day. That's before he decides to go to the gym. So he goes, oh, here's a picture of what he looks like. Oh my gosh, is that kid fit? So I don't know the, you know, the chicken or the egg, but working as a mail carrier, the kid is, is super fit, right? Looks good, strong. Well, what does that do if the day afterwards he says, and now I'm retired or I work in an office job? You still have to get your 10, 12 miles in, but you're going to do it on your own time, or you just don't do it at all, right? So that's a good point, Logan. And even walking around the office, that's why those, those uh, trackers, the Fitbit and the Garmin uh, trackers, those are interesting to see. They don't always get 100% accurate. Sometimes folks hook it to their phone, their Samsung or their iPhone, and you can have a walking track. How many miles do I walk during the week? And see what you're giving up. Because if your purpose in life is to retire so that you can sit and binge watch TV, then you might want to second, have a second thought. At least say I'm going to work three days a week, right? Or volunteer. A lot of our clients are nurses. Work per diem, right? You know what that is. As a per diem shift, you're working much higher pay per hour, but you're no longer going to be on the pension system. You don't have benefits because you have them through your retired programs or your spouses. So it's a great way to do it. And other kinds of part-time jobs or something, volunteering like you've mentioned. These are all different ways to for the purpose and the societal interaction. The things that we don't always realize that are side effects of just working and being with the same coworkers day in and day out. You're always interacting with someone when it's just you or just you and your spouse. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so check. Have you ever broken a finger, shoulder, hurt your knee, twisted your ankle, hurt your thumb? Got a paper cut on your on your pinky. Have you ever done that? Of course you have. And you've looked in the mirror and you said, I never even realized how much I use that body part. Right? Finger. Try to button your shirt, right? When you get a cut on your thumb and you try to button my, my button-down shirt and you're like, oh. And you have to figure out a new way to do it or I hurt my shoulder and now I can't put my shirt on this way. I've got to put it on. The, right? You got it? That is what life is like every single day when you're working. You don't even know that you're reaching, folding clothes at, at the department store, reaching, standing, making sure your knees are moving. Yeah, your knees hurt. Yeah, your shoulder hurts. But imagine without that lubrication of moving forward and backwards and, and folding, imagine what that life is like when suddenly you sit there. I've done it, right? Get the flu for four days. Lay in bed and then get up and you're tired. You're cranky. Your back hurts even though it didn't hurt before, but now it does. I want to stress this because for for decades now, we have pushed retirement is not about sitting in a rocking chair waiting to die. It's about living the second half purpose of your life, whether it means you're making a difference. Some people, uh, look, I met with somebody recently, inherited 
uh, many millions of dollars. Their life is completely different. They went from working to never having to work again a day in their life. An amazing experience. They're very shocked, really, by the whole thing because that's not how they expected. They, they're, uh, you know, his mom was was pretty private about how much money she had. And then all of a sudden, they're millionaires. So I said, "Gosh, what are you going to do?" He said, "Eric, we don't know anything else except to get up, go to work." You get three-day weekend coming up. You have a holiday coming up, whatever it is. So we don't even know. And so my counsel to them is as you walk through this next phase of your life, make sure you have a purpose, whether it's through church, whether it's through charity. Maybe you are agnostic or even atheist and you just like puppy dogs. I don't care. Help out at the shelter. Whatever your, your life's purpose is, there are other people on this planet. And I think you have a... I, I hate that word, social responsibility. It's such a scam for me taking money from you, right? It was the whole global warming thing that we've now debunked. <laughs> we say, okay, now now it's not global warming. It's climate change, right? Oh, silly. You can jump down those roads and be part of that. But just remember this. Your life has to have a purpose. It has to be something more than you're just a taker. I, I think, right? That's my opinion. You have to give. I don't care if you give your time, if you give your money. You give your talents, you give advice, you give counsel. I can tell you when I would teach, we have financial classes, wonderful financial classes. And when we teach those classes, I always learn from the students, right? Any good teacher will tell you when you have a class set up, there's always somebody there who can add a different insight or they ask a question a different way or suddenly they become uh, you know, they, they walk down a road of questioning where you go, well, I never thought of it that way. And that's the part of your life that I don't want you to give up. I don't want purpose to leave because you just inherited a million or two or 10 million. It doesn't matter. Your purpose in life has to be bigger than you. Now, the, the gentleman I spoke with uh, the other day who, who just inherited the money says, listen, I, I've given my life to charity. I've done things for others my whole life. I'm not interested in leaving a big bucket of money to charity. It's not what I want to do. I just want it to go to my kids, my three children. I want them to have a life, make sure my grandkids, right? I don't want them to get it all so that they don't blow it at 25 years old or 30 years old. I want them to have it in phases, okay? So those kinds of, it's different maybe than what you or I would do, right? Maybe you and I might start a homeless shelter. I don't care. Whatever it is, we do something different maybe. But that's okay. That's your life. It's healthier not to retire because I don't want your joints to not move. Because as simple as it is, folding clothes or reaching out and put it's just the same thing that I was walking for the mail carrier who walks 12 miles in a day that's an amazing amount of effort and what a I don't know I I understand folks that work for the mail for the postal service many of them don't like it it's a it's a rare place right going postal wasn't a, a, a conversation on accident it's a lot of stress a lot of pressure a lot of uh unrealistic expectations. That's what I'm hearing. I get it. But if you put it in the right perspective, what a wonderful job to be able to get out, talk to people. People are grumpy. Well, maybe you can brighten their day. People are jerks. You just move on and go to the next. So there are jobs like that that you can stay focused and, and continue. And a big part for the reason of this modern, newer emphasis on purpose in retirement is you know, 100 years ago, retirement didn't exist. That's right. You just work till you died. 80-ish years ago with the advent of Social Security, your re retirement age where you could start collecting was 65. What was the average lifespan going to be? Yeah, some say 63, some said 68, but you weren't going to collect very long. It's right. why they chose 65. It, it, they chose the, a time when they knew people wouldn't be collecting for 30, 40 years. Or if they were, you'd have one person out of 100, and, and was, that was easy to plan for. But a part of that was is if you were only expected to retire in three, four years with the health and medical standards of the day, that was more predictable. And you probably weren't going to be able to physically or health-wise to travel. Yeah. Well, look, we actually had a, a client that found out by accident that he had thyroid cancer. Totally by accident. Went in for allergies and came out with thyroid cancer, right? That means modern technology today was able to pursue down an avenue 
and catch something before it was horrible. Uh, I remember in, in youth group as a 19-year-old kid, we were playing volleyball, and the youth leader at the time, Bob, great guy, you know those guys that give to kids, uh, are, I think are always, young people are always amazing. And somebody played volleyball, they came down and their elbow hit Mr. Bob in the nose, broke his nose. He went in for an MRI, right? You had to go get it fixed. Went and they found a mass a little smaller, about the size of a golf ball, a little smaller. Behind there, a tumor next to his brain. Zero symptoms. The tragedy of breaking his nose turned into finding a tumor, and he lives a normal life. That didn't exist before. You just one day woke up dead, right? It's just a surprise. Those are the kinds of modern technologies where even HIV today is not a death sentence. Did you know that? Even HIV today is not a death sentence. A friend of mine has had HIV since the 80s. Still alive today. Takes the medications, tons of it. Sometimes there's side effects. Normal life. Keep in mind, we hope there's going to be a day when cancer, right? It's an evil disease. I've seen it close up. Many of you have. But with prayer, with hope, with effort, with money, with research, with involvement, we could beat it. So you need to make sure that you protect yourself. We need to make sure that your financial life is in order. That's fine. But more importantly, we have to make sure your purpose life. Right a few years ago, was that The Purpose Driven Life? Rick Warren, remember that book? Workbook started. Then he had uh, work classes work groups all around the country, Bible studies and other individuals would get together, talk about their purpose-driven life. I don't know. Maybe it's something to focus on even in retirement. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in just a second. We continue. Okay, we talked about healthier when it's healthier not to retire. How about ways to hone your retirement plans after this new tax bill? What are some of the changes? Hey, surprise, some of the changes are really big, and they're going to affect your taxes uh, and, and your retirement accounts. Probably a lot more than you think when we come back. Your Total Financial Solutions Hour. I'm Arif Hallaby. That's Logan. On your place for news, talk, and information. The Total Financial Hour on KHTS, your hometown station. You worry because your mom and dad aren't as active and are finding it more challenging to live on their own. The answer? Premier Assisted Living Community, Oakmont of Santa Clarita, now leasing. Located on Newhall Ranch Road, Oakmont of Santa Clarita, bringing comfort and luxury to assisted living. Your parents can enjoy five-star amenities and panoramic views in a world-class community. No other assisted living community has this kind of luxury and amenities in our valley. Visit oakmontofsantaclarita.com. Team training, life changing. F45 Training Stevenson Ranch on Lions Avenue just east of Wiley Canyon. At F45, they have fun. They've created their very own way of functional training so you can train the way you move in everyday life. The F45 style combines both strength and conditioning. Working with friends, you can be assured of results, not boredom. Download the F45 app today. Select Stevenson Ranch in the two week trial and book into classes right away. F45 Training Stevenson Ranch. Come join the family. The Harlem Globetrotters will bring their amazing feats of basketball world tour to the greater Los Angeles area from February 17th through February 25th. Witness amazing Globetrotter moments that become unforgettable Globetrotter memories. Prepare to be amazed by the ball handling wizardry and experience the antics that will have kids of all ages laughing the entire time. Don't miss the world famous Harlem Globetrotters, February 17th through February 25th. Game schedule and tickets at HarlemGlobetrotters.com. Santa Clarita's hometown station. Now FM, 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Your hometown station. This is your place for news, talk, and information, your hometown station, AM 1220, KHTS. All right, welcome back to the show, the Total Financial Hour. I'm Eric Hallaby, Logan Hallaby joining me, and of course, the old Jeffrey Gerard. I say old because uh, he's been out for a few few weeks. He's back. I got older in that time, by the way. I just wanted to let you know. Was that, that again? I, I got older during that time. You did. So. You got a tiny so bit older. You were accurate with that. So we're talking about your family's finances, retirement. A lot of things have changed with this new tax bill. 
So let me kind of start at the 30,000 foot view and bring it down and, and then gentlemen get your perspective on it because part of what we're seeing at an accelerated rate, in fact, I've never seen it accelerate like it has been recently. And that is people more concerned about taxes and expenses specifically for the state of California, where in other words, people are making choices and decisions to have to retire outside of California simply because of the tax rates. I've seen, I'm seeing that at an accelerated rate in our practice. But let me back up a little bit. The changes in the world of, uh, of the tax world is what you're allowed to write off. And it's funny, guys, when one side says it's all about rich people, and then the most liberal New York Times and Washington Post will do calculators and they'll go out and remember, was it 60 Minutes or 2020 yeah. went out and they, they interviewed all these people and, and they had the CPA, Mr. Jones from so-and-so firm, looked at their taxes and every single one of them, 100% of the families, they, took, they did a single mom, they did a retiree, they did a young couple, they did all the, the you know, they picked somebody from each one of the, the, the spectrum across the country. And to a person, they're all receiving a tax refund. Now, before you use Mrs. Pelosi's uh, saying, which is, oh, it's just crumbs for the little people. It's the rich people making the money. Remember, of course the rich are going to get a greater tax break. Why? Because they paid more in taxes. Because the tax break that was given was on the federal income tax, not the Social Security or the FICA. Now, you can argue that we should reduce that or not, and that would help, quote, the little people because – Everybody pays that up to 100000 120 or so thousand in income. So what is – but that's not the discussion. They didn't lower it. Everybody still pays it. The rich guy, the poor guy, everybody in between, right? If you work, if you've earned income, you pay. So what are we seeing as that – you might have heard it's called SALT, the SALT income tax deduction. The SALT deduction, what does that mean? Jeff? Well, it's clearly an acronym. Yes, and I'm a little weak on that, but um, we're we're seeing it as the state and yeah, local local taxes. It's basically an acronym regarding some of the taxes, and and here is what it, I think it is. You know, we're looking at you talked about California being really expensive uh, among other states in the union. They're they're working towards kind of levelizing that a little bit so that we're not seeing I think it's so that we don't see the exodus out of California I mean that that, that could be one of the the motives behind it but uh, the, the capping of this you know salt and the deductions at 10,000 you know that was really going to hit the high tax paying taxpayers out there so and, and here's the reason folks because a lot of you don't maybe understand in California because we have everything right. there are some states that have a higher income tax and either very low or no state property tax. The local area, we would need to put in a new sewer, the school needs to be rebuilt. They'll have local property taxes, but the state doesn't have a property tax in most of the country. If they have say if they have income tax, right? Usually a state has one or the other. Here's a good example. Uh, Texas does not have an income tax, but they have a, a pretty high, a two, two and a half percent, depending on where you live, property tax. The state of Oregon has pretty low property tax, but pretty high income tax. Washington state, no income tax, but higher property tax. Follow me? California has both. (laughs) We said, oh, if you can't take from one, you take from the other. You know, and I lived a sheltered life in California all my years, but, you know, once upon a time, I lived in Indiana. Great state, beautiful, a little bit of God's country out there. I think basically anything in the Midwest can, can really be like that. But I could not believe how much cheaper gas was there yeah i mean in half insane huh yeah and groceries and everything else eh, kind of about the same gasoline was the biggest thing but property taxes you know a testament to what you said were a little bit higher than they were in some areas over here so we do see a little bit of you know of, of a difference over there but i think people go and they flock to where it really impacts them the most and it depends if you have a a, a house that is a, a larger value in california then you'll pay a higher property tax. Yep. If you're earning more money, you'll pay more income tax in the state. Both of those are capped combined at $10,000. What that means is maybe you're in Texas and you don't have any state income tax or, or Nevada and you don't have any state income tax, but you have property tax. So they don't. The, the federal government says we don't care where you get it from. The most you can write off is 10000 whether it's income or whether it's property tax. Well, if you're in most of the country, I don't know, 95% of the country, 
that's a pretty good deal. You're good. No problem. You won't even have $10,000 worth of combined taxes. And yeah, that's right. You end up in a great situation where when you add them all together, you're right around or even less than 10000 In California, it's very likely my property taxes are more than $10,000. Mm -hmm. So forget, I don't get to write off anything on the state income tax. So for me, on that side of the equation, I'm going to pay a little bit more in taxes. But what did the federal government do on the other side that helps everybody including retirees. So if you were a retiree that lived in an apartment or a trailer park or you were renting, then you don't care about the 10000 write-off, right? I mean, that's more than enough. So where do you win? You win because they raised the free money you get without any tax called the standard deduction. It used to be about 6300 per per person. Today it's 12000 So husband, twelve. Wife, 12. Or just a person, you know, by yourself, single is 12. So that means you might have lost it if you had a, a substantial amount of income or property tax, but you got it back in the standard deduction of the 12000 So if you are a retiree and you're renting or you have a very low property tax because you're in a Prop 13, your income is mostly coming from tax-free or tax-friendly sources, right? Your CPA is going to be doing the tax conversation for you. We won't. But if that's the case for you, and you sit down and you go through the math, then what you need to look at is I probably not going to have $10,000 worth of property tax because I'm renting or I have a mobile home or, or an apartment. But for you and your wife or husband, $24,000 of income is tax-free right off the bat. Add that plus Social Security plus money from your Roth IRA if you pull it there. You're probably at forty thousand, fifty thousand tax free before you even open the door. And, and look at the struggles people go through when they're when they're preparing their tax returns. They are going through, oh, I don't want to do the standard deduction. So they do an itemized deduction. They pay somebody extra and they have to go and find a bunch of things and dig up a bunch of expenses. Not you know, they're legitimate, of course. I'm I'm sure most people are doing that. Yeah. Uh, and and think about that. So now right out right out the gate you don't have to do that anymore. In, in a lot of cases for the lower income earners. So that's kind of a nice feature, I think. And, and that's the simplicity. That's when they said, uh, was it Paul Ryan or, or some of the other folks, you can put your, do your taxes on the back of this postcard, right? Yeah. Name, address. Because by the time you take the free 10,000 and the free 12 and the three free 12, for most people, it makes more sense. But what I want to encourage you to do, always run your taxes both ways. Sit down with your tax preparer, your CPA, and before they hit send, go back and say, I am, let's play pretend that I'm going to itemize. And you put it all in and they say, okay, here's where it's going to be. You'll have this much of a write-off or refund or you'll owe this much. But then do it again with the standard deduction. And that will give you a chance. Will I save money or will I not? This isn't going to make a huge difference for 2017 taxes. So the, the proactive approach you're going to have to have, that doesn't start till a year from now. Some of these other planning, because whatever you do now, you're going to have to pay taxes on today and or next year when you file. So what a lot of folks are doing is the same thing that Toyota did two years ago. Frito-Lay did last year. Pepsi did. Um, uh, this year, Nestle did, or, or 2017. And that is they left California. So when they look at the whole math and they say, I don't get a write-off anymore. Now, California and New York, we're suing, we're mad, right? Every time the, the left has a problem, they, they immediately think lawsuit. You wonder why everything is so expensive and lawyers are involved in everything? Ask yourself that. Why every time you turn around, California is suing somebody for something? And it's indicative of the political mindset in the state is the deduction stuff changed for state and local taxes. What's the response? Now that people are talking about trying to get rid of Prop 13 and Raising property taxes. Why isn't the response, you guys, the other direction? Why isn't the response, okay, you're right, we're finally going to have to be fiscally responsible. <laughs> we're finally going to have to stop wasting money. Right? If you were married to somebody and your spouse was going out and spending more money than you made, your conversation with that spouse isn't, okay, I guess I have to pull a shift on Saturday. Right. Oh, wait, wait, now I have to make more money. I'm going to work Saturday and Sunday. At what point in time do you go to your spouse and you say, you know what, you're just probably spending more money. We're going to have to make some changes. Maybe we're going to have to downsize our house. Maybe we're going to have to lay off the, 
the pool man and I have to do it myself. We have to do something. Some, something has to change. The state has to do that. We have thousands of employees in the state, between Caltrans and the state workers, that are duplicate jobs that are there because the unions put pressure on the politicians to keep them in place. That is normal. That's common. We know that. Why aren't you guys upset about it? Why aren't you upset that the Democrat politicians in this state have chased you out of your home state? Why aren't you mad? Why aren't you like, you know what, this kind of stinks. I get it if, I, if circumstances I chose to work in a career where I didn't get paid very much and, and uh, consequently I can't afford to retire here or, or I made some bad decisions. and Okay, all right, that's your responsibility. You made some mistakes. Got it. But why aren't you that did everything the right way, what you thought you were supposed to do, you behaved, you saved, you put your kids in college, you didn't move around with a new house every 15 minutes, and you thought you were doing the right thing. Why is it that you aren't upset that the Democrat, because it's a one-party state. The reason I'm saying Democrat, folks, you can be mad. You do your little blog in your you know, basement of your mom's house. I get it. You can send your little emails. The reason it's Democrat politician, folks, is because that's the only ones that are up there. If it was the other side, folks, I would be the first to tell you. I don't care. I don't care about labels. I care about actions. You can call yourself Voodoo Johnson. I don't give a crud. If you're a jerk and you're hurting children, if you're a jerk and you're hurting people, then that's a problem. And none of you seem to care. You're like, up oh, next, I'm moving. I'm moving to North Carolina, moving to Tennessee, moving to Texas, moving to Arizona. <laughs> this, this is Tuesday, right? Tuesday. From all of my appointments yesterday and this morning, three out of seven clients are leaving the state when they retire. In, what, a day and a half. And these aren't dummies. These aren't poor people. They're people that get income, and don't take a job, right, because they're retired. Well, that's good. I want you, why do you think Florida says, come and spend money here all day? Retirees, all of you, just come on over. You're going to need products and services, and you're going to buy things, but you don't take a job. So that means for every retiree that comes down, I don't know what the math is, maybe three or six or eight jobs, we want more of you, says Florida, says Arkansas, right, quietly while everybody's picking on the South. Arkansas went out, has one of the best medical centers around for hips and knees, no kidding. which is what older people, <laughs> has one of the best medical centers around for dialysis and diabetes treatment. Older people need it. And because they're pretty smart there, they said, we're just going to lower the tax on some of your, uh, and the responsibility on some of your retirement income. So come on down. Come on down. Housing is cheaper. Income tax is almost nothing. Property tax is pretty low. Come on down. And so people in Boston and Detroit and California, and they say, oh, listen, I could buy two houses, six rental properties, and, and uh, you know, have a, the car of my dreams and live there six months and a day out of the year and travel wow. and do whatever else. So the point is California still thinks it's your problem. You're not giving enough. Give us more. What do you mean? It's like a whipping, you know, and the, we're building of the pyramids, and they're whipping you. Work harder, work harder. I got an idea. How about you get six other guys to help? How about you put down your, your hookah and pick up this brick? That's fine. Right? I don't know. As an Arab, I can say that, right? Hookah? I don't know. Never tried it, but it looks good in the window. We had it on the counter, but it's never a, tried it. It's a decoration. You know, if you think about all of the people earning wages in a state like California or New York where there's really high income and their mindset is to defer the taxes, you know, by saving in, you know, pre-tax 401ks and, and I, traditional IRAs where they don't pay the taxes. And then if part of that strategy is to go to a, a tax favorite or even an income tax free state, you know, they've, they've really essentially put themselves in a great position. You know, I'm not saying that that's what people should do, but that's ultimately how they're going to benefit because they were used to saying, okay, I'm, I know I have to account for a third of my income, my retirement income going away because I haven't paid the tax man yet, but now they get a pay raise by going somewhere else. Yeah. And one of the things that we're seeing is when you do your taxes, uh, check with your CPA, your financial advisor and ask them, Hey guys, right now I live at, you know, in California, this is, but in the future, I'm going to be moving to wherever. And they can do an estimate of what it might be like for the state tax responsibility there or here. And if you happen to have a break, like, oh, you get some money back this year, consider doing a conversion. 
which is where you take some of your traditional IRA or your 401k and you move it over into a Roth IRA or Roth 401k. So let's say you moved over $20,000. That's a taxable event. You got to pay taxes today on 20,000. That's right. But you'll never pay tax on that money again. It's not subject to the required minimum distributions. It's kind of exciting at age 20, age 70 and a half, you have to start taking money out. If not, fines, penalties, fees, bad day. I've never met so many people as I have your clients Arif that said you know, I, I don't need the money. I don't want to take it out. Yeah. Why do I have to take it out? I never thought that, you know, when I was younger, that that would be a problem that someone would have too much money and that they'd have to spend it. And here they are forced to do that. Yeah, it happened last week. Another person said, Eric, I have to take this money out. My goal for this money was not for me to use it today. I have a job. I have, I work part time. Our bills are paid off. I don't, I don't need it. I want it later. I want it to go to my children. I want it to go to my grandchildren. I might need it just in case for medical. If my wife and I ever need medical issues later, can't, doesn't the government allow us to just keep it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Even if you don't need it, there's ways to get around it. Uh, I think, you know, uh, bring in experts in every single field. Bring in an expert in the health world. Bring in, an, right, as a physician, bring in an expert of, of a hospital CEO. Bring in an expert of a financial. Bring in an expert from the insurance companies. And maybe four or five of each of those. And ask them, what would you like to see? What's the problems? What's the goods? What's the bad? What changes sound? What, what things do we do, says the government, that in your world just doesn't make sense? And I see it pretty regularly. Sure. We go, why, why the heck do they not allow you to just put money into Roth? Why do you have to go to a dedu IRA, non-deductible IRA, and then put it into a Roth? <laughs> right? Backdoor Roth. Some of you have heard of that. Yeah. Eric, my CPA says I am not allowed to put money into a Roth. Because I make too much money. Ready? Not true. Well, I know, Arif, but, but my CPA, you know, I, I make 300000 a year. Not true. But I can't. Not true. But Arif, you don't understand my CPA. Listen, what I'm telling you guys is rich people make the rules, not poor people. And rich people make 300000 a year, and rich people want to put money in Roth, so they must have created a way to do it. Just scratch your head and go, mm, let's talk about math and logic for a minute. And when we do that, they've created a way to go into an IRA, but they don't get to write it off. The next minute, they convert it to a Roth. That's it. You can't go directly into a Roth, but you can put it in an IRA. You can't write it off, and you can put it into a Roth IRA. But I have to pay taxes on the interest. It's sat in the account for one day, a fraction of a penny of interest if you're lucky. So... No taxes on the interest. But I have to pay taxes on the money that I put in. No, you don't, because you never wrote it off. So why doesn't everybody do it? I don't know. Our clients do, I guess. You just gave away the sauce, the secret sauce. That's it, sauce. folks. That's the, that's the secret. It doesn't matter. Now, listen, you have to, okay, step one, fill out this form. Step two, you got, there's stuff you have to do. But what I want you to do is to understand that these rules, the new tax rules, if you do it right, you can create a better source of retirement income. And more importantly, if you have time and you end up wanting to stay in California, even if they start raising taxes and doing crazy stuff, then at least you have an opportunity to pay less in, the, in taxes. Meet with your CPA, your financial advisor. Sit down with these folks and ask them questions. How do I plan... I want to stay in the state of California. My kids are going to be, how do I plan to do that? And there's ways to do it. You can do well, it. Well, and you touched on it at the beginning of this conversation about converting traditional to Roth assets. You know, when you have a, a substantial or even any part of this tax refund coming to you, that's money that you can absorb. You know, and to your point, if you if you rolled over 20000 or converted, rather, 20000 from a pre-tax to a post-tax, you've positioned those dollars forever out of partnership with the government. You never have to worry about those required minimum distributions or any taxes on that. You basically get to do what you want with that money, including gifting it. So if you have a bit of a cushion where you're going to receive money and you convert some of those dollars, that's where you can absorb some of that on your tax return. It won't cost you as much money or even any, anything at all, potentially, after you meet with your CPA, you'll know that. And a big advantage of doing this as well is when you don't know what's going to be happening in the future for the state and even the federal we're currently at what's relatively a historically low 
income tax rate for the federal system as long as it's had a federal income tax, certainly in most of our lifetimes. Yeah. So what that means is, I'm sure, you might have to pay taxes on it, but give it 10 years, you get a party switch in the state, federal, Congress, whatever, suddenly they raise taxes and you're safer because you did it before. Yeah, when, in, when rates were lower, this is what my anticipation is. Uh, I don't know if the Republican Party in California is sitting back and pretending to do things so that California will implode, right? That's what we expect. We expect the pension system is unsustainable. The budget is unsustainable. It's just a math problem, you guys. It's not a, it's not a political thing. Grab your most liberal math professor from UCLA and sit them down and say, here's the California system. Here's the math. What do you see happening? Oh, in three, four, five, eight years, whatever the number is that he or she comes up with, and they'll tell you it will blow up. So everybody knows that. In fact, many of your left-wing politicians who are messing up the state of California, guess where they plan on retiring? Eh, not here. <laughs> I can't tell you how I know all of that, but I do. I know at least two pretty far lefties that are not staying in the state when they retire. They're messing it up for everybody else and say, hey, y'all get the lights because I'm leaving. Yeah. Catch the lights on the way out. And so here's what I think is going to happen. I think California has, the, has to have a collapse, a massive crisis of some sort, whatever that looks like. Uh, they're going to have to collapse Prop 13. They're going to have to reorganize the entire pension system only for people that are 60 and under or 50 and older. or I don't know. They're going to make some changes. And I think the other part of it is you are going to have to walk through a process of realizing that wherever you are going to be, you have to be smart for you and your family. We are in the state that, that pulls oil out of the ground, brings it into our ports, and refines it. And to put that gas in a truck and drive it 800 miles away, and they pay less per gallon than we do, go back to the math and logic. Is there something wrong with that? I think there is. We'll take a break. We'll come right back. The Total Financial Hour. I'm Eric Halaby. Hey, some, uh, some more issues on the tax bill. How's it going to affect your retirement? We got that when I come back. I'm Eric Halaby. That's Jeff Gerard and Logan Halaby on your place for news, talk, and information. This is your hometown station, KHTS. Did you know that SCBI has the only international baccalaureate program in our community? That means that students at Santa Clarita Valley International Public Charter School can participate in very rigorous classes run by highly trained and skilled international teachers. They work with kids to become active, compassionate, and lifelong learners. Students with IB diplomas at select colleges can graduate with a full year credit at their university. Schedule a tour today online at scvi-k12.org or by calling 705-4820. The stress was unbelievable. Debbie Morris is a changed woman. A giant boulder's been lifted. Debbie called Made For You. I'd finished a day of work. Professional, residential, and commercial cleaning. Walk into my house. Made For You. It was an absolute pigsty. Weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, or even one-time seasonal cleaning. Our mess kept growing. 255-2922. Even when we weren't home. 255-2922. Made For You rescued me. Marston's Restaurant has been a Pasadena landmark, voted the best breakfast in California by the Food Network magazine. Discover Marston's Santa Clarita location open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Marston's also has a fantastic catering menu that adds a delicious twist to any event. And they cater picnic dinners for that memorable romantic date. Experience Marston's on Newhall Ranch Road and McBean or log on to marstonsrestaurant.com. Thanks for listening to your hometown station, AM 1220, KHTS. Hey, welcome back to the show, the Total Financial Hour. I'm Eric Halaby. That's Jeff Gerard and Logan Halaby talking about your family's finances. Okay, listen, uh, the, the new tax law, there's some things that you can do. And as you go through the process, number one is to always sit with the professional. And don't be afraid to get one or two opinions, right? I'm okay if you have – you may have to pay for it. Uh, you might have to sit there and, and – uh, you know, pay for an hour of their time or whatever. Okay, that's fine. It's appropriate. You're, you're using their time. But remember, there are some things that you can do on your own. Good. Logan, you had something. A big one of them is we've always heard giving to charity can be a great way to, for, to do good in the world. Yeah. Helped you to d deduct from your taxable income. 
Stuff like that has changed, however, with this new tax bill because the standard deduction changed. It's still possible to give to charity and to do good in the world and get the tax benefits for yourself, but maybe not in the same way it used to be. With the, the standard deduction having been raised, suddenly you don't need the same amount in order to actually have it be worthwhile to make some deductions. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's a part there's a point also to that Jeff that you had. Well, and it's good because and what you're saying Logan is you can still do that, but now you don't have to take the distribution from your from your assets, from your retirement accounts and put it in your right pocket and then put take it out of your left pocket and give it to charity. You can deduct it or take it right out of your retirement accounts, give it right to charity. It still counts towards your required minimum distributions, but you don't have to include it as normal income. Which means the rest of your income is not subject to taxes at a higher play bracket, right? So for instance, let's say you have $100,000 in your IRA and the first year you have to you're required to take out let's say $3600, right? 3600. You could say, "Wow, I could take that in, take it as income, I have to pay tax on that and then go and try and give it to charity and then, you know, do the accounting measure." Now you can just gift it right from your assets to that charity and it takes care of everything, which is a nice feature. And it also has the benefit of doing more good because you can give the same amount of dollars that leave you without having to pay the taxes on it. So the charity gets a closer to the actual numbers. Yeah, that's right. Great so the point. charity can receive a higher dollar figure. And it matters because, listen, charity deduct, charitable deductions, there are no limits under this the tax bill. So we don't see an issue where there was a deduction maximum. That's why California is so funny. Uh, California is willing to forgive they're working on different options here, right? Because mm. it's the higher income people that create jobs. It's the higher income people that pay the taxes. And if it's the higher income people that don't receive the write-offs anymore on the federal level, they're leaving. So California says, no, 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 wait, 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 before you go. We're going to let you donate your money to us. To the state. We're going to waive. Oh. Yep. So the state's creating a, a, a mechanism for that. We're going to waive your state income tax. Or we'll give you credit, dollar for dollar, whatever you donate to the state of California. And because it comes down the road of a donation versus ta state income tax, mm -hmm. the donation is 100% write-off. So you can donate to the state of California a much higher dollar figure. Hmm. Then the state gets to receive those revenues. You get to put it on that column of your, your federal return. <laughs> Isn't that credible? Yeah. yeah. They have a whole bunch of different stories. That's one of them that they're doing. <laughs> That's cute. H how nice of them. It's, really, the state has been so considerate with allowing us to donate to them. I think it's kind. I think they're, they're givers. Most of you don't understand that uh, you know, they're, they're doing this for you. You don't worry your pretty little head. Well, here's another one, Arif. Uh, how about the estate tax exemption? You know, there was a, a lot of talk in the last few years about how that's changed, and it looks like it's gone up considerably. It looks like it's almost doubled now, hasn't it? Yeah, I think you're going to see the state income tax and the state. Listen, some states have sales tax, right? They'll have much higher sales tax. Do you understand in California, at least in L.A. County, we're nine, what, nine and a half percent sales tax. We are near the top income tax. I think we're number one or two in the state. And we are number one or virtually number one in property tax. That's the problem, guys. There is no way out. So keep that in mind. Give us a call if you have a question. 888-99-RETIRE. I know I'm always bagging on the state. Wish it would improve itself. 888-99-RETIRE. Thanks for joining us. I'm Arif Halaby, and that's Logan and Jeff on AM 1220 KHTS.